We have heard stories about the great El Chapo, but El Chapo couldn't have done it all alone, could he? He had, by his left and right, a few of the most notorious men to have ever walked the earth. Spoiler alert, none of them had a happy ending. Join us as we talk about El Chapo's most ruthless hitmen that were caught by the FBI. Today we have curated the most dangerous hitman of the most powerful and influential drug dealer on the face of the planet, El Chapo. El Chapo in Mexican slang meaning shorty was Dwakin Archivaldo Guzman Laura's pet name since his early teenage years. The fellow landed himself up with this name due to his short and stocky physique, 1.64 meters to be precise. But this didn't stop him from aiming for the stars. El Chapo was born into a poor farmer's family on the 4th of April 1957 in Sinaloa, a small village in Mexico. Equipped with the skills, Shorty was introduced to the drug world in the most bizarre way one could imagine. By planting and harvesting marijuana with the help of his dad, Guzman then began working with various other drug lords and kingpins like Hector Luis Palma Salazar and Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo before he founded his cartel in 1988. Under the Sinaloa cartel, El Chapo had several hitmen working under him. From helping him run his daily business to committing genocides for him, his hitmen had a lot of blood on their hands. These are the top three stories of El Chapo's closest hitmen. Number three. Jose Antonio Torres Marufo. We all have heard of game rooms and guest rooms. However, I bet one wouldn't be able to fathom what it is to have a murder room. Just as the name suggests, Antonio owned a soundproofed white tiled room just to commit all his murders. Yikes. Famously known as Jaguar, Torres was the hitman responsible for the transportation of the cartel's drugs from Juarez to the USA. Being assigned with this job was particularly dangerous as Juarez already had a cartel and El Chapo was just entering the market there. Marufo was initially party friends with El Chapo and started working for him several years later somewhere around the mid-2000s, the same time El Chapo decided to claim the smuggling routes in Juarez. The drug trafficking freelancer was presumed to be the head of an enormous elite group of well-trained gunmen known as Gente Nueva. Under his reign, he executed over 4,000 people just in Juarez. But ironically, what ultimately got him arrested was trying to kidnap a groom who was a U.S. citizen. He was arrested and is currently serving a 40-year sentence in Arizona. Number 2. Manuel Aponte Alejandro Gomes Diaz Born on 10th December 1974 in Chilpancingo, Guerrero, Aponte served in the Mexican Army for six years from 2000. 2006, sent on a mission to arrest El Chapo, Aponte's life took a complete 180-degree turn when instead of arresting El Chapo, he accepted his bribe to switch sides and work for the Sinaloa cartel head instead, famously known as El Bravo or the Fierce One. Chapo trusted the ex-militarian so much that he would use him to spy on the rest of the cartel members and find out the snakes in the grass. He also helped Chapo in all his escapes from helping him build tunnels to kidnapping and distracting Navy officers. He did it all. When Guzman was arrested the second time, Aponte tried to run for head of the Sinaloa cartel. Unfortunately, on April 9, 2014, he was found dead with his body mutilated in La Cruz. In spite of no actual proof, Conspiracies hint that the Sinaloa cartel members had killed him in the greed of wealth and power. Number 1. Hosto Ivan Gastelum Cruz, the head of the Sinaloa cartel and also famously known as El Cholo, Hosto Ivan Gastelum was the right-hand man of El Chapo, deemed as the most dangerous yet trusted hitman of Chapo. He was responsible for over 80% of the cartel killings, most of which he carried out personally. El Cholo was arrested several times by the police, but due to the influence and power of his master, got out of prison every time. Despite being deadly, the man was in love. In one of his police chases in 2015, his 22-year-old beauty queen partner Susan Flores was shot dead by the police. The death deeply affected Cholo that barely a month after the incident the residents of her town woke up to 67 narco banners hanging around their town. They said, the soldiers came to kill me, but couldn't. The girl had never even carried a gun, let alone fire them. Eventually, El Chapo and Chapacolo were arrested in a tainted raid at Los Mochis. 
They tried escaping through a tunnel which remained fruitless as the local police got them red-handed at the checkpoint. Ultimately, they both were sentenced to a lifetime of imprisonment. I think it's rightfully said that life is like a game of chess. After the end of the game, the soldier and the kings are kept in the same box. Who among these hitmen do you think was the most dangerous? Let us know in the comments down below.